Hey everyone, so I'm back with another video for you and today I'm going to be taking a look at the 9980 XE, which when I first heard about it and got asked about it, I was really, really excited about it. Mainly just to see whether it was ever going to be a competition for the 2990 WX, because the 2990 WX is actually still a little bit cheaper, but obviously Intel with the higher clock speeds, I was hoping for great things. Now I had seen some stuff online, mainly uh, Steven from Gamers Nexus and DeBauer saying about the fact that they were really hot. So I was kind of prepared for that anyway, but was never actually kind of prepared for quite how hot it was in the end, because it is a really hot cookie. Now you can see the, 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 the rig here, but I'm gonna go through from the basics, talk you through all of the stuff like I normally would do, because let's face it, I've been lucky enough to play with it and I want to try and give you as many as much information as possible, just like we were a couple of mates chatting at the pub. So, obscene amount of money, 18 core, but what I was kind of hoping for was that we were going to get something slightly better than the 7980 XE, which came previous. So, I was hoping for slightly better clocks and I was kind of prepared for slightly more heat. But the weird thing was, so at stock, the uh, 9980XE is better, boosts a little bit better, and it does beat the 7980XE at everything at stock, as you'll see in some of the graphs in a bit. But once you start talking about the overclock, it actually ended up not doing as well. So with this seventh gen one, I managed to get that running at 4.5 gigahertz. I can't quite remember the volts now. It was just, I think it's 1.22 volts. So quite low volts. And it was with a manageable uh, amount of heat. I will have tested the other one on the Corsair H115i. Now, with the uh, the new version, the ninth gen version, I genuinely thought it was going to overclock better. Now, I could have got it stable at 4.6, but there was just way, way too much heat. And I mean, literally way too much heat. So I ended up having to turn it back to 4.4, which is less than the seventh gen, just to get the temps under control. And that's even though I had the Corsair H150, which is here, which is 360 mil, changed the fans out for 2,400 RPM, and they're the ML edition fans as well. They were on 100%. Then I also had to have a fan blown at the socket. Now that's not a board problem. That's not because we were cooking the VRMs or anything like that. It was literally just to try and get everything as cool as possible. So I was cooling everything. Then also had to put a fan around the back as well. Now I do have to be fair to Intel. When I overclocked the 79, sorry, when I overclocked the 2990WX, the Threadripper one, I did found that benefited from cooling around the back of the socket as well. If you think about everything that's going on in that little piece of silicon, it does create a fair bit of heat. And I would genuinely say that both do would favour uh, some full in all-in-one water blocks to help the VRMs, not that it's ne specifically necessary, but you're obviously going to get a lot of heat soak between the two anyway. And by that, I mean the VRMs will warm up and then it will soak into the CPU and vice versa. Um, and uh, literally with this, we were having to pummel it with uh, air to keep it cool, or we were hitting thermal throttles. And it wasn't thermal throttles because of VRM issues, it was thermal throttles because of CPU temperature issues. So we had to work exceptionally hard, even to get 4.4 gigahertz stable. And with all of that, it was still at 86 degrees at just over 1.2 volts. So it overclocked worse with higher temperatures than the previous seventh gen. And the reason why I've covered overclocking straight away is because when we get into the graphs, I do want to uh, draw some specific attention to where things sit uh, in and about in there. So first of all, Blender. Now top of the graph, you can see Threadripper. More, more cores, obviously, so that's going to lean in its favor. But I did kind of think with the higher clock speeds, that the Intel would have been a little bit closer. And I, I, the AMD stuff is, has done exceptionally well in this. And you need to remember as well that the 2990WX is actually cheaper than this. So uh, with Blender, yeah, it did really well. But if you uh, pay attention to the graph, you'll see that at stock, 
the uh, ninth gen is better than the seventh gen. But once you mix that overclock in, the seventh gen pulls in front by quite a bit really, and it's all down to the, the difference in the overclock. Uh, it's a similar scenario when you look at Cinebench. Uh, Cinebench as well, that's the multi-cord one. So again, that's gonna favor AMD at this level, but when you do go down into the single threaded stuff, that is when you can see that the Intel does slightly better than the AMD ones. But in all honesty, at this kind of level, if you're genuinely worried about single threaded performance, then you are better off not having one of these at all and going for one of the processors that will easily do five gigahertz. And if it is just single threaded that you're worried about, then you know why would you uh, not just save an awful lot of money? Because what you do need to remember, when they say that it's got a 4.5 gigahertz boost, that's not on all of the cores, that's one or two. So you could technically go and buy one of the cheaper processors if that was what you needed. If you try and get all of the cores running at 4.5 gigahertz, I've already shown you that the cooling required is absolute insanity. And it is one of the things with this processor that you kind of do either need it at stock and are happy with it at stock, or you go and look at other options, quite literally, because it's, it's I wouldn't say this is feasible for most people. I don't think professionals are gonna buy one of these and then go to the lengths of putting custom full cover water blocks on with massive radiators. Uh, and it would take a lot of tinkering. You genuinely need a, a fairly good knowledge of the BIOS to be able to get them to run that well because you have to increase power limits. And there's all kinds of things that you have to get in and dig around um, and mess around with. So the long and short of it is, because I don't need to go round and round the bush, is if you're in the market for an X299 processor with 18 cores and you want to overclock it, go and buy the 7980XE because you'll get lower temps, it'll be easier to work with. Because of this being out now, you're probably gonna save a little bit more money as well. And in the, the long uh, school of things, you're probably gonna end up with a better overclock. If you still need a 29 uh, X299 based build and you're not gonna overclock it and you're okay with all that money that you're gonna spend, then I would say, yeah, okay, that is when the 9980XE makes sense. But I did say if it has to be X299, because if it doesn't need to be X299, and you're brave and you're willing to step out into the unknown world and maybe even slightly more hands-on world with uh, Threadripper, I'd say the 2990WX is still, in this kind of mental area, is much more worth it. And if Intel then kind of comes back with, ah, yeah, but gaming and this and that and the rest, what I would then say, because they are gonna go on about slightly better game performance and you don't have to mess around with things in Precision Boost to make things run better and you know put it into game mode and all that stuff, because let's face it, you know, in their defense, you don't have to go and change memory uh, settings on this to then go and play a game uh, with the same performance, whereas with AMD, you do have to kind of switch between the memory profiles in Precision Boost to favor a game. But what I would then say is, for the same money, you could technically go and buy the 2970WX and a 1080 Ti for the same money as this, and then you've kind of got 24 cores and a pretty damn good um, graphics card for the same money, and you can have a look in the graphs, it's pretty damn close. So, yeah, it's, it's a bit of a strange one, but it seems to be AMD's thought process of, okay, we can't get the silicon to run as quick clock speed wise, so let's just chuck cores at it, in this market is really, really starting to make sense. And the more Intel pull processors out like this, which I technically think this ninth gen is worse than the seventh gen because I don't understand how it can be so much hotter than the, the previous version. It should, be the, it should be cooler, it should be making our lives easier. And when the older one, when overclocked is quicker than the new one with lower temps, it just doesn't make any sense. So it's a bit of a perplexing one. I've given you my thoughts. If it was me, 
I would genuinely be spending my money on the seventh gen and then overclocking it because this with a big overclock for an enthusiast that wants the absolute best, this is just a little bit too hard to live with. So there you go. You've got all of the information. My battery's running out, so I'm going to love you and leave you. Thank <laughs> you.